Hello everyone. I'm back with another interesting video that is networking basics. So this is networking basic part three. If you missed the networking basic part one and part two, please go through with this channel and you can find the more videos about the basic part one and part two. So in this slide, we are talking about networking basic part two and we're going through with what is Mac and what is IP address what is unicast, multicast and broadcast and what is network devices, hub duplex, full duplex, IEEE standards and Cisco three layer hierarchy. So let's start with what is MAC address. MAC address is also referred sometimes as physical address or hardware address or it can be represented as NIC that is network interface card. It's a 48 bit with six byte in which means it store is the firmware of your network card. As we know, the network, each communicating devices has their own IP address and their physical address. But the IP address can be changed, it can be a dynamic, but the MAC address will never change. It's always unique all over the world because the MAC address, each every devices we are using our laptop, PC, computers, router, mobile phone, any networking devices, they have their own MAC address to identify their self. So, in brief, you can say the MAC address is something your physical address, just like a home, or you're using your house number, you're using your office numbers, your address. So that is your address. So another person or another computer in network can communicate with you in proper manner. So how we can check the MAC address? As you can see in our example, we are using a Windows operating system and we have a uh, Linux. But first we start with the Windows. If you type simple ipconfig in command prompt, to getting the command prompt, you can go with the window art, then the dialog box appear. Just type there the CMD and with the command prompt will appear and just type there ipconfig. It will show you all the information that is related to your network. It can be your IP address, it can be your subnet mask, DHCP address, if you have enabled with your network or your corporate network. Or also you can see there is a physical address that's highlighted in the red box. To check the same, we have, a, we know the MAC address is always divided with the six part. The first three parts that is divided to your vendor, that's OUI. And the last three parts, that's a unique NIC identifier. We can say the MAC address is a media access control, which also refer as physical address, hardware address, or NIC, and it's always Unix all over the world. But what if we are using uh, another operating system, is Kali Linux? In Kali Linux, we simply use the command, like as we use in Windows, that's a IP config. But in Kali Linux, we have a different command, that's a IF config or IF config. After entering this command, if you give you the IP address of your machine, as well as also give you the MAC address of your machine, that is Ether, that 000C, this is your MAC address in your Linux operating system. So, we learn about the MAC address. Next, we have IP address and its classes. Basically, what is IP address? IP address is a logical or it's a logical address or your numeric identification of your system. We are using your computers, your laptop, your router, your server, or your mobile phone. Each devices have their own addresses as logical address, which can be described with the, if you're using the LAN or you're using a WAN, it's always can be changed statically or dynamically. So what is static and dynamic? These are the, we divided the IP address in these two category. As they, we know, the static IP, they never change and they can be changed by only by administrator and they reserve for, for some specific purpose. If you don't need IP address, if you don't want to change with your server, with your configured machine, it's always having the same IP. And dynamic IP, dynamic IP can be changed by your DHCP server. You change periodically as per the configured rules. So this is the difference between the static and IP address and we can see in the diagram we have a laptop, server, router and also desktop. 
the desktop having the IP address 192.168.1.2 on same way laptop having the 1.3 and of course the by default address of your router is 1.1 and the server is configured with 1.10 what happen if desktop want to communicate with your laptop and laptop also want to communicate with your desktop simply the desktop will just communicate with the, your laptop by using the IP address 1.3 and will send your message to server hey I want to connect to your laptop that is IP is 1.3 and the server will check your source address that comes from 1.2 and the destination is 1.3 on the same way in a reverse order if laptop want to communicate with your desktop the server will check the where the IP address of your source that is 1.3 and the destination IP address is 1.2 so IP address help in each every devices to communicate with each other to identify with that or we can say the IP address can be classified in five classes class A, B, C, D, E so why we need it because each IP classes have their own specific their purpose as we know in our real life scenario we have if you want to communicate with the people person society or in family or maybe he is out of station he is in city or maybe out of station or anywhere all over the world simply we have a different platform to communicate with them we can using by their mails we can using by their post offices we can go through with their vehicles using bus taxi autos flight and of course train so in same way in the computer networking we have a different method or different classes of IP address so it's divided with the class A B C D E class A that comes between the range of 1 to 126 class B that comes in range of 128 to 191 class C is a 192 to 223 class D that is 224 to 239 and class E of course 240 to 254 D and E they reserve for a specific purpose for multicasting or E is used for you, reverse for, reserve for experimental purpose. So, this is the classes of IP addresses. As we know, the IP address is a 32 bit number to identify the host or network, and we have a static or dynamic, we have already learned about it, and we have also a private and public address. The public address we are using as our internet which is connected to our the world while using the internet in the private if you're using a LAN in our office in a, our home or house or in corporate area we have a private ranges of IP address that range start from 10.0 172 and of course 192 to reserve or to save the IP addresses so this is our, about the IP address and how we can find the IP address so it's very simple if you're using a Windows operating system we just simple type in a command prompt IP config it will give you the IP address of v4 we can see on an example it's a 172.26.58.29 is the IP address or it's a logical address of my machine that is Windows operating system what happened if you're using the Kali Linux in Kali Linux the same command we have the different way in the if config and it will show you the IP address of your machine you can see in this checkbox there's a 192.168.1.17 is your IP address of your machine and let we go on with the next one that's uh, what is unicast multicast broadcast addresses so in simple way we can say unicast is sending your message to a specific people or specific system or computer as you can say and we have two groups group A and B and group A we have a A B computer if we want to send the message to a specific computer that is B that is a unicast it will not send your message it will not broadcast to anyone if you're using know about the word that's a multicast the multicast is something is sent to multi station or multicast address to a group that refer to a group on same way if you want to send our message to group a it means that we have two PCs in group E E and F the message only goes to group A if not goes to group B is for the specific groups and later on the advance with the both combination come the broadcast broadcast will send your message 
all over the machine that is available in your network. It will broadcast the message to each and every computer, each and every group in your network area. So this is the basics of unicast, multicast and broadcast. As we know, we need uh, network devices. And why we need it? As we know that uh, network devices is necessary to communicate with one PC to another PC, is to communicate with the one network with another network. As you can see, as we in, in real life scenario, we need to communicate with people. We are using our telephones, we are using emails, we are using post, we are using the dark post, we are using flight, train, vehicles to communicate with the people. On the same way, in networking, we have our different devices for different purpose. First, we start with the hub. A hub is now the day is obsolete, is not used now the day. It's fine, it's easy to use and easy to configure. But the major drawback of hub is it is not an intelligent device. It's said to be a duffer device because it will send your message to all our devices in your network. Or we can say it will broadcast messages to each and every devices in your computer or in your network so your message will go if you want to send a message to people computer a definitely goes to all the computers that is available in your network a b c d e and so later on so to overcome with this problem we have a more advanced technology we have a device that is switch switch is also said to be an intelligent device because it will not multicast your message to each and every devices that is available in your network it will send the message to a specific computer to whom you want to send so it's said to be an intelligence device and next we have a router as you know the router is uh, the task of router is to communicate the two different network uh, used to establish a connection between two different network for connecting purpose or the one network to another network it's operated on OSI layer 3 and later we have a repeater repeater is just regenerate your weak signal and forward your message to your destination it works as a buffer or it works as to boost your signal and just pass it on to your next destination device and just here we want to have a word that what is router as we already heard it and what how router is work so we can see in this scenario we have a two computer computer a and b what if they want to communicate with each other computer a is in another network and computer b is in your b network so computer a sends your message to your router via any switch or if you maintain any devices between that and that message comes to router and router check it's a valid ip and it's check the it check the filter process it's a predefined rules and if it's fine and if it's the tuning is well then it's forward to your message to computer b and the computer when we receive that we is acknowledging the same we we'll send the repeat message to your router hey this is a message from my this specific IP address then again router will check and perform the task with the filtering process by defining the predefined rules and just the message is sent it back to computer A so this is the basic concepts how a router works and this is the routing table as you can see the routing table list of the routes of every network it will check your network path how the packet need to transfer from one source to destination it can be configured as statically or dynamically as we can see in the picture to getting this table we need to use a command that's a IP route it will give you the route of the specific from your source to destination next we have duplex modes we have a half duplex we have a full duplex so duplex communication system provide point-to-point -point system from one device to another device in simple way we can say the half duplex in the example like a walkie-talkie it transmit only signal at one time once the sender send the signal and receiver cannot send on the same time just like a walkie-talkie transmit at the one time so this is the disadvantage of it and next we have a full duplex the full duplex the all nodes can send and receive the message at the same time the data can be transmitted simultaneously by both machine at the same time as you can see our system is configured with the speed and devices in duplex mode we can check it in our network property 
under the heading of advanced. So this is all about the half duplex and full duplex. And next we have uh, IEEE Ethernet standards. The IEEE Ethernet standards we define the physical and data link layer specification for Ethernet. As we have uh, some standards and protocol which is defined by IEEE that's the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers under the standards of A02.3. In scenario we have a 10 base T, 100 base T and 1000 base T. So what it is? We can understand with this scenario with this diagram the 10 base T. These three words donates which each and different category. The first 10 it defines the speed of your network. The host speed is your network is using. In the middle we have a base. It defines you're using a base band. And T that is using your cabling you're used for the purpose. So this is the IEEE standards that perform by your IEEE AJ2 standards. And later on we have a three layer hierarchical mode that provided by Cisco. As you can see in picture, we have three layers. We have access, distribution, and core. Basically, it's designed to maintain your trust and reliable network infrastructure. So the devices can be communicate with each other properly in your network to maintain the scalable, reliable, and it's, of course, it's a cost-effective network. So how does it work? The packet comes from your PCs to your switch, hub, or your router. To your ISP, so start the process with the each and every layer devices have different on task. The access layer, which control the use of the work of the access resources, whether it's correctly or not. Later in goes to distributions. It's a primary function to provide the filtering in the WAN access. We check your packets, it check you it's valid or not as per the predefined rules. And the core sections is effort to a network backbone. So this is the main task. So this at the top of the route is, is responsible for transmitting a large amount of traffic to maintain to avoid a collision detection. So this is about the three layer, three -layer productions by the one Cisco. So guys, this is the end of the slide. I hope you this, like this video and waiting for your next video. Definitely, I'll give you the more interesting video later on. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.